Now, we saw a bit of controversy yesterday when Usman Khawaja got bowled out by Oli Robinson. Yes. And he gave him a send-off, which has been a talk of the town lately. Saying that to someone as nice as Usman Khawaja, dropping the F-bomb at him, and uh, it's restarted the debate of what brand of cricket is being played now because Australia used to cop a lot of stick for that kind of cricket. Who can forget Ricky Ponting's outbursts? Who can forget Michael Clark saying this to Jimmy Anderson? And like things changed after that. I think in the pre-match press conference, Pat Cummins was asked, oh, okay, is it, it going to be a lot of sledging, etc.?" And then he said, no, we haven't been playing that kind of cricket for the last two years, as you can see. So we're just going to play our brand of cricket, which is Pat Cummins is a very nice guy. And this whole Aussie team is not the team of yesteryears where it used to be in your face kind of attitude. Shane Warne, Glenn McGrath, Ponting, Clark, they all used to sledge. But no. this Australian team hasn't been playing like that. And now, Ollie Robinson, how do you see that? Was it necessary? Because I know fast bowlers, I get it in the heat at the moment. They're trying to get someone out. Guys playing 140s, mm. I wouldn't say totally destroyed your chances. But he's annoyed the English bowlers a lot. So was that necessary? How do you guys see as English fans? <laughs> um, For me, so it's a bit unnecessary. Everyone likes the old send-off. Fine. When Jimmy bowled Alex Carey yesterday, gave him the absolute death stare as he ran past him cheering. That's fine. I think bringing that sort of language to the fields, I personally, I don't care for it too much. Robinson has form for this as well. There was a Sussex game a couple of years ago where he was going off at the opposition and the umpire as well when things weren't going his way. So yeah, I think he's got a bit to learn about maturity on the fields. People are making such a big thing out of this I've seen on Twitter today, but as People are calling it racist as well, which is obviously we'll talk about it in a moment. But yeah, you're right. As the ambassador of your sports, and especially when you're doing really well, what kind of a look that brings, especially as an English cricketer, because English people, they're supposed to be the most civilized people on earth, supposedly, teetotling. <laughs> John Richards, how do you go about that? I think it's shameful. In fact, I listened to Michael Vaughan recounting how things used to be back in his day. And he said, when I was playing against the Indian continental teams, I used to go in and say, good morning to them as I went into bad. And they would give a good morning back. Hello. It was all friendly contest. But when I went to play against Australia, I said, good morning. As I went into bad, and I got this burning oh, stare of hatred. He's lucky. He's lucky if that's all he got. <laughs> it's a shame that. Since Australia's cleaned their act up and promised to be good boys, but we should go and spoil it. That's the point that I was trying to make. So it seems like Ollie Robinson, now let me be clear, I didn't see any racist kind of thing in this. Like it's just a verbal spat. Like fast bowlers especially are, are used to acting that way, although that is being phased out and it's not being encouraged anymore. Gone are the days of, how good were the death stares of Kirtley Ambrose? Like I, I, I was a kid back in the nineties, and I used to be scared of him. But he would never say anything. No. He's just a towering figure, and he, just, he bowls so well, and the stumps go cartwheeling, flying, and then he just looks at you like this, and it's like whoa, 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 whoa. that sends you shivers down your spine. But then we had other fast bowlers like that would be melting off at batters. But now that's all being phased out. And speaking of Ollie Robinson, John, or maybe you could shed some more light on that. He's obviously known for this kind of behavior. So he's been pulled up on that on his old tweets. So he has actually apologized for not this one. There was nothing racist in this incident, but he has apparently made some racist comments in the past, such as this tweet back in 2012, September 5th, where he said, my new Muslim friend is the bomb. We, and then using words, uh, other kind of words, etc., body shaming, fat shaming, etc. As English cricket fans, do you think there is a culture in English cricket because we know Michael Warren was something happened with him too. Like he called yeah. a Pakistani cricketer or something in a cricket club. Is there something that we should be watching out for? He was cleared. Yeah. Of that, so, of Warney. So well, they found, it wasn't necessarily clear. They found there wasn't enough evidence. Yeah. Two very different things. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's a whole, it's been a whole story for the last, I think, two years. And Rafiq played for Yorkshire 
This is going back several years now and made allegations and actually did it in front of a select committee at the House of Commons as well on the racism that he faced in the Yorkshire dressing room. Yeah. And th- th- when those allegations came out, so it was some really horrific stuff involving heroes of many English cricket fans. Michael Vaughan wasn't the only one. Uh, it wasn't Matthew Hoggard. It was, there was another ex-England bowler as well who was drawn into it, as, among other Yorkshire players. It was, yeah, it was really disappointing. And Yorkshire Cricket Club itself has been undergoing a very inward reflect, period of reflection about what it can do better. And I, I suspect that's happening around the rest of the counties as well, lest they also face the same, same questions. But in terms of Ollie Robinson himself, I think those, those tweets came out just after he made his debut two years ago. And yeah, I think he'd just taken a bag for the wickets on debut as well and then was immediately suspended for these tweets, oh, wow. which were made, I think, be- way before he was a professional cricket player. So you'd hope that the England media team have just been drilling him for the last couple of years to firstly to not say anything stupid but also to actually reflect on what he said how it was wrong what he should be doing differently in the future well, yesterday that yeah that send-off yeah i think you're right there there aren't any racial connotations to saying as Kwaja to f off you effing lee but does, is it a good look no, of course not, especially when you've had serious issues with things you've said publicly in the past. Yeah, yeah. It's got a reputation, it's hard to shift. Yeah, the thing is that, yes, that was a good send-off. He should have been sent off. He was sent off. That was good. He shouldn't have said it. The trouble is that particularly fast bowl- bowlers need to feel anger against the opponents in order to channel that anger into their speed. And the other problem that we're facing here as a human culture is the bar of what's acceptable has moved Hmm. and a lot of people haven't caught up yet, which is understandable. Yeah. But let's just hope for the best because obviously it's not a good look and it's a learning curve for young cricketers out there that these days, anything that you say, it can be held against you. It can be pulled up in future. So make sure you're careful with the words that you choose. Including in the changing room and on Twitter. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's just talk about cricket now. 